I arrived in Gomwa Ojobi, a village in Ghana's central region, 10 days after she died. The air was heavy with sadness, a palpable weight that seemed to hang over the community. An unspeakable tragedy had occurred in this seemingly peaceful village, leaving a lasting impression on everyone who knew it. This is the spot where an elderly woman forsaken by those who should have cared for her spent her final days on earth. The memory of her suffering hangs on, engraved deeply into the hearts of the villagers who pass by each day unable to forget the haunting tragedy. It all began with a tragic road crash in Gomwa Ojobi one afternoon. The old woman, suspected to be suffering from a mental illness, was among the victims. She was taken to the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital, where she stayed for two months. But unlike other victims, no family came to visit her. No one came to take her home. The hospital staff did their best, but with little information to go on. Only that, she was from Gumwa Ojobi, the struggle to find her family. And so, she remained alone, a nameless figure lost in the system. When she was finally discharged, the hospital staff allegedly took her to the outskirts of Ojobi. Here, on a desolate bush between the Gumwa Ojobi Presbyterian Church and the Paris Chapel in Ojobi, she was abandoned. For a week, she lay there, ants crawling over her legs. According to eyewitnesses, her cries of pain was frequent day and night, a haunting signal of her immense suffering. Eric Amwakobafo, a resident deeply moved by the woman's story, recounted to me what he witnessed. Day and night she was, she was here. It was raining continuously for about three or four days and she was still in it. Wow. She was in the rains. I mean, the rain was beating her. So I had to call in the assemblyman mm -hmm. because it was getting pathetic. Yeah. We didn't know who she belonged to. Normally in the night you will see her panting, crying. Mm -hmm. she, will, she will be crying, mm -hmm. mentioning names. Uh, she was mentioning a particular guy's name. I don't know whether that, that was the son or so. What was the name she was mentioning? I can't recollect the name. Mm -hmm. Akos Opare, another resident who lives right opposite where the woman was abandoned, told me how an ambulance dumped the woman on the side, leaving her to struggle all by herself. I was in my garden when I saw an ambulance drive past. Seconds later, I saw it driving away, so I assumed it had come for a sick person. I witnessed a woman in a wheelchair at a junction where despite our efforts to alert the police, they did not respond. As evening fell, ants began biting her, compelling her to drag herself to the pathway for safety. Vida Anaman and Akoso Pare still walk past the spot daily, haunted by the hope that they could have done more to save the woman's life. Her right leg was emitting a foul udder, so we provided her with a cloth to cover it. It frequently became damp, prompting us to change it regularly. No one came to her rescue, and here she died, alone in her agony. With both legs deteriorating, a powerful stench emanated from her, according to eyewitnesses. After a relentless struggle day and night for a week, she finally gave up her soul and passed away on June 10, 2024. The site, as you can see, remains deeply affecting remnants of the woman, such as her tattered covering cloth, um, a plastic sheet that served as her bed and other personal items are still scattered about. Residents, despite their efforts, feel a lingering guilt believing they could have done more to help her before her demise. The assemblyman for the area, however, says he was concerned. We don't have social homes around. So this woman, we couldn't send her to a place where she could have been catered for. If we have these social homes in our districts, I'm sure the social welfare officer 
could have easily sent her to that facility where she could have been catered for. So this should let we as a nation look at it and begin to discuss on some of these social problems which are affecting the nation. So I'm hoping that the issue will not end after the, suppose, the perpetrators are, are found and are punished. The outcry of the public was immediate and fierce. In response, the Ghana Health Service suspended the medical director of the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital, Dr. George Pra, pending an investigation. A committee was also set up to uncover the truth within 30 days. This prompted me to visit the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital, where it all began.